Hello folks, welcome into the ITLS Academy. Myself, Dr. Himani, and today we are going to discuss about the gas chromatography. Before uh, we are just jumping on the gas chromatography, we have to know about the chromatography. What is the chromatography? So let's discuss about the chromatography. Chromatography is an important biophysical technique that enables the separation. identifications and purifications of the components of a mixture for a quantitative and qualitative analysis the russian botanist mikhail tsvelt coined the term chromatography in 1906 so the first analytical use of chromatography was described by charles and mart in 1952 a wide range of chromatographic procedure make us of difference in size binding affinity affinities charge and other pro, uh, properties to separate material <coughs> sorry so it is a powerful separation tool that is used in all branches of science and is often the Uh, only means of separating components from complex mixture so now we have to discuss about the what is the principle of chromatography so what is the uh, uh, principle of chromatography how chromatography uh, work so <coughs> sorry chromatography is based on the principle where molecules is in mixture applied on the surface or into the solid and fluid stationary phase this called a stable phase is separating from each other while moving with the aid of a mobile phase the factor affecting on the separation process including molecular characteristic relation related to adsorptions is called liquid solid or part part uh, partition again it could be the liquid solid um, in between the liquid solid phase and affinity or difference among their molecular weight because of these differences some compounds of the mixture stay longer in the stationary phase and they move slowly in the chromatography system while other pass rapidly into the mobile phase and leave the system faster so the three components thus form the basis of the chromatography techniques first one is the stationary phase phase second one is the mobile and third one is the separated molecules so you can see in this picture this one is the allude and this phase is called allude and this called analyte and second one is the column third one is the stationary phase and this one is the mobile phase and this called is the cotton plug and last one is the allude so first phase one the stationary phase second one is the mobile phase and third one is the allude or separated molecule so let's start with the discussion of uh let's start with the discussion of uh, stationary phase this phase is always composed of a solid phase or a layer of a liquid adsorbed on the surface solid su support mobile phase this phase is always composed of the liquid or a gaseous component and third one is the, the type of interaction between the stationary phase mobile phase and the substance contained in the mixture is the basic compound compound effective on the separation of molecules from each other so now we have to know about the types of chromatography substance can be separated on the basis of variety of method and the presence of characteristics such as size shape total charge hydrophobic group present on the surface and binding capacity with the stationary phase 
this lead to different type of chromatography techniques each with their own is instrumentations and working principle for instance for separation technique based or <coughs> sorry molecular characteristic and interaction type use mechanism of ion exchange surface adsorption partition and size exclusions other chromatography techniques are based on the stationary bed including column thin layer and paper chromatography so we have to know about the different type of the uh, chromatography so let's slide uh, next slide is uh, uh, going to name of different type of chromatography so um, first type of chromatography is column chromatography second one is ion exchange third one is the gel permeations or it called also molecular sites and third one is the affinity for chromatography fourth one uh, next one is the paper chromatography next is the thin layer chromatography gas chromatography and last one is the high pressure liquid chromatography and, the, and this these these are the basic and important types of chromatography we used in generally laboratories uh, and other types of chromatography also present uh, uh, we have to we, we can discuss in other lecture so in this lecture we are going to only discuss about the gas chromatography so now question is that what is the gas chromatography gas chromatography differs from other form of chromatography in that the mobile phase is a gas and the components are separated as vapors it is thus used to separate and detect small molecular weight compounds in gas phase the sample is either a gas or a liquid that is vaporized in the injection port the mobile phase of gas chromatography is a carrier gas typically helium because of its low molecular weight and being chemically in inert the pressure is applied and the mobile phase move the analyte through the column the separation is accomplished using a column coated with a stationary phase the equilibrium for gas chromatography is party uh, partitioning and the components of the sample will partitions or we can say like distribute between the two phase first is the stationary phase and second one is the mobile phase so compounds that have a greater affinity for the stationary phase spend more time in the column and thus elute later and have a longer retention time than sample that have a higher affinity for the mobile phase affinity for stationary phase is driven mainly by intermolecular interaction and the polarity of the stationary phase can be chosen to maximize interaction and thus the separation ideal peak are gaussian distributions and symmetrically because of the random nature of the analyte interaction with the column so in this picture you can see and here this is the carrier gas in this this is the uh, gas cylinder in this gas cylinder carrier gas uh, are present here and this is the gas flow regulator you can just regulate the flow of gas how how much flow you want according accordingly you can just regulate it this is the sample and um, in um, and this called is the injector Pot. and this is the oven in this oven a column are present here you can see here this part is detector detect 
in this way a uh, detector of base product can be just exit by this way and this is the computer you can just read the data and you uh, we can say like that you can just analyze the data so this separation is hence accomplished by partitioning the sample between the gas or and a thin layer of non volatile liquid held on a solid support a sample containing the solute is injected into a heated block where it is immediately vaporized and swept as a plug or vapor by the carrier gas stream into the column inlet the solute are absorbed by the stationary phase and the dis, uh, dissolved by a fresh carrier gas the process is uh, repeated in each plate as the sample is moved toward the outlet each solute will travel at its own rate through the column their band will separate into distinct zone depending on the part, uh, partition coefficient and bands spreading the solute are eluted one after another in the increasing order of their kd and enter into a detector attached to the exit end of the column here they registered a series um, series of signals resulting from concentration changes and rate of elution on the recorder as a plot of time versus the compositions of carrier gas stream the appearance time and the height width and the area of these peak can be measured to yield quantitative data now we have to discuss about the parts of the gas chromatography gas chromatography is mainly composed of the following parts first one is the uh, carrier gas in high pressure cylinder with attended pressure regulatory and flow meter second one is the sample injector system third one is the the separation column fourth one is the liquid phase fifth one is the supporters and sixth one is the detector and seventh one is the recorder so this is the picture of the gas chromatography you can see here this is the um, part in which the uh, gas cylinder represent here and the column are present here and by this uh, computer you can see or you can just analyze your data so first we have to we are just going to discuss about the first part of gas chromatography is carrier gas in high pressure cylinder with attendant pressure regulatory and flow meter so in this method the helium in helium and to h hydrogen argon are used as a carrier gas helium is preferred for thermal conductive detector because of its high thermal conductive relatives to that of most organic vapors and to who is um, preferable when a large conjunction of carrier gas is employed carrier gas from the tank passes through a tongue angle well a flow meter it could be a 1 to 1000 ml per minute capillary re restrictors and a pressure gauze is 1 to 4 atmosphere so next uh, we are going to just discuss about the sample injection system in this system liquid sample are injected by a micro syringe with a needle in 
inserted through a self-scaling silicon rubber sectum into a heated mel metal block by a resistance heater. Gaseous samples are injected by a gas tight syringe or through a bypass loop and well, um, valves. Typical samples volumes range from 0.1 to 0.2 ml. Next is the uh, heart, uh, the sapphish column. The heart of the gas chromatography is the column which is made of metals bent in U shape or coiled into an open sp spiral or a flat pencil shape. Copper is used up to uh, 250 degrees centigrade and this swift lock fitting make column insertion easy. Several size of column are used depending upon the requirements and next uh, part is the liquid phase. So, uh, in this liquid phase, an, uh, an infinite uh, variety of liquid phases are available, limited only by their uh, vo um, volatility, thermal stability, and ability to wet the support. No single phase will serve for all separation problem at all temperatures so non-polar what is the non-polar things the, we have to use paraffin squalane silicon uh, grazes epizone l silicon gum rubber these materials separated the components in order to their boiling point next one is the intermediate Polarity. The material contains a polar or polar, um, polarizable group on a long non-polar skeleton which have dissolved dissolve both polar and non-polar solute. For example, diethyl hexyl phytate is used for the separation of high boiling alcohols. Polar is like carb carbovaxes, liquid phases with a large proportion of a polar group. Separation of polar and non-polar substance. Hydrogen bonding. Polar liquid phase with high hydrogen bonding example glycol and specific purpose phases is like relying on a chemical reaction with Solute to achieve separation, like example, AgNO3 in glycol separated unsaturated hydrocarbons. Next one is the supports. The structure and surface characteristic of the support material are important parameters which determine the efficiency of the support and the degree of separation, respectively. The support should be inert but capable of immobilizing a large volume of liquid phase as a thin film over its surface. The surface area should be a large to ensure the rapid attainment of equilibrium between stationary and mobile phase. Support should be strong enough to resist breakdown in handling and be capable of packed into a uniform bed. Die atmospheres are Kingsler treated with Na2CO3 for 900 degree causes the particles fusion into kosher aggregates. Glass beads with a low surface area and low Porosity can be used to coat a 3% stationary phase. Porous polymer be different, uh, differing in the degree of cross link like liking of stirring with al alkaline vinyl pentanine are also used with 
which are stable up to 220 degree. Next one is the detector. So detector sends uh, the arrival for the separate uh, components and they provide a sig signal. These are either concentration depends or mass dependent. The uh, detector should be close to the column exist and the uh, correct temperature to prevent the composition. Next one is the recorder. The recorder should be generally 10 MP full scale fitted with a fast response pen 1 second or less. The recorder should be the recorder should be connected with a series of good quality resistance connected across the input to attenuate the large signals. An <clears throat> interactor may be a good addition. Next one is the, the procedure of gas chromatography. How we have to use gas chromatography. <coughs> Sorry. First procedure is like uh, sample injection and vaporization. So a small amount of liquid sample to be analyzed is drawn up into a syringe. This syringe needle is Coagulated into the hot injection port of the gas chromatography and the sample is injected quickly. The injection of the sample is considered to be a point in the time. That is, it is assumed that the enter sample enters the gas chromatography at the same time. So, the sample must be injected quickly. The temperature is said to be higher than the boiling point of the components of the mixture so that components will be vaporized. The vaporized component then mixed with the inner gas mobile phase to be carried to the gas chromatography column to, to be separated. Next step is the separation in the column. Components in the mixture are separated uh, based on their ability to adsorb on a on or bind to the stationary phase. A component that has adsorbed most strongly to the stationary phase will spend the most time in the column. Um, it could be, um, we can say like that, uh, it will be retained in the column for the longest time and will therefore have the longest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatography last. A component that absorbs the least strongly to the stationary phase will spend the least time in the column or we can say it will be retained in column for the shortest time and will therefore have the shortest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatography first. So, if we consider a two components mixture in which component A is more polar than component B. So, component A will have a longer retention time in a polar column than the component B and component A will have a shortest retention time in a non-polar column than component B. Next step is the detecting and the recording result. So the components of the mixture reach the uh, reach and uh, reach the detector at different times due to different uh, differences in the time they are retained in the column. The component that is retained the shortest time in the column is detected first. The components that is retained the longest time in the column is detected last. The detector send a signal to the chart recorder which result in a peak on the chart paper. 
the component that is detected first is recorded first the component that is detected last is recorded last now we are going to discuss about the applications of the gas chromatography the gas chromatography analysis is used to calculate the content of a chemical product for example in assuring the quality of product in the chemical industry or measuring toxic substance in soil air or waste or water uh, gas chromatography is used in the analysis of airborne pollutions for performance enhancing drug in athletes urine sample oils spills and essential oil in perfume preparation so gas chromatography is very accurate if used properly and can measures picomoles of a substance in a 1 ml liquid sample or parts per billion concentration in gas is sample gas chromatography is used extensive in forensic science disciplines as diverse as solid drug dose um we can say like that pre conjunctions form or identification and quantification aerosol investigation paint chip analysis and toxic toxicology cases employ gas chromatography to identify and quantify various biological specimens and crime scene evidence and what is the advantage of the gas chromatography is the use of longer column and higher velocity of the carrier gas uh, permit the fast separation in a matter of a low uh, of a few minutes higher working temperature up to 5000 degree and the possibilities of converting any material into a volatile components make gas chromatography one of the most versatile techniques gas chromatography is popular for um, environmental monitoring and industrial applications because it is very reliable and can be run nearly continuously gas chromatography is typically used in application where small volatile molecules are detected and with non aqueous solution gas chromatography is favorite for non polar molecules and what is the limitations of the gas chromatography is compounds to be analyzed should be stable under gas chromatography operation conditions they should have a vapor pressure significantly greater than 0 typically the components analyzed are less than 1000 dA so because it is difficult to vaporize larger compound the sample are also required to be salt free they should not contain ions very minute amount of a substance can be measured but it is often required that the sample must be measured in comparison to a sample containing the pure substance sub uh, suspected substance known as the reference stagger so guys uh, we have already uh, almost covered um, related to gas chromatography things um, hopefully you all guys enjoy this lecture and if you feel any difficulty then definitely you can call me and you can just mail me you can just follow us uh, by the insta facebook twitter youtube whatsapp and uh, linkedin thank you guys for listening me